some pretty good titles in my working career, but the title of Anna's mom, that's just the best one in the whole world. <laughs> and I had that sense from Gil that from day one, she knew that her daughter had a mission, a life to fulfill that had incredible meaning. And I think in the back of her mind, she always had that knowing that her daughter came here for a mission. This is Teddy. This is Anna's teddy bear. And he was a huge source of comfort to her when she was in terrible pain, which was most of the time. She would say, Mama, where's Teddy? And so I would go get Teddy and she would snuggle him. To be part of a, an experience like this is almost indescribable. One of the things that I was so struck with was that this family found incredible meaning through the greatest heartbreak of their lives. I'm a long distance runner and, and so she'd come out of an event and she'd go, Mom, my legs are numb, my feet are numb. And I was like, oh honey, you know, here, let's try a different way of tying your shoes. I know 50 ways to tie shoes, we'll try them all till we find the right one. And it, nothing worked, so I took her to the doctor and couldn't figure it out. He did some blood work and he called the next day and he goes, I think the lab messed up. This, can't be right, but I'm going to send you to a specialist in Denver. She's really good. So went down there. She did all the blood work again. And so uh, she said, I am really, really sorry, but Anna has stage four neuroendocrine cancer. And I was like, what? She had surgery, 10 hours, nine, 10 hour surgery to remove all these tumors and then chemo. As soon as she was healed, Dr. Liu and Dr. Cohn started her on, I believe four of the meanest chemos there are out there at the same time. And the next week we were told that it wasn't working. And what did we want to do? And uh, that was a really tough, tough day. <laughs> about having your heart ripped out. So I had to call Mount Evans Hospice and I say, hey, you know that order for palliative care? Can you change that to hospice? And they were so wonderful. They came out and just took care of us. I just remember two people that were holding probably the most sorrow that I have ever seen in my life. But they were loving and they were committed to seeing their daughter through this time. When the nurse practitioner and I left, we sat in the car and cried for a long time after meeting them. But it was a loving, peaceful place. They took the most horrible experience in the world and made us feel cared for and loved and listened to. And I had always been afraid of the word hospice until we had our encounter with hospice. And now to me, hospice is one of the most beautiful words in our language. One day, after chemo, Anna was throwing up profusely and very sick. And I thought, I gotta do something to give this kid some hope, something to live for. And I said, you know, honey, I've got this crazy idea. I wanna run in all the national parks. Would you like to, when you feel better, would you like to come along and drive the SAG vehicle for me? You know, throw me a water bottle once in a while. She goes, no. She says, I'm going to run them all with you, Mom. She had all the resolve in the world, and I knew she wanted to do that so badly with me. And uh, so when, when she died without us having been able to do this trip together, it just kept pressing on my mind more and more, and I think it was from Anna. Mom, you need to get out there and do this. 
you need to go do this, Mom. Uh, nine months after Anna died, uh, I was out there doing this. And then it came to me one day that <laughs> I carried Anna for nine months. It was nine months from her diagnosis to her death. And it was nine months after her death that I started the National Park Run. And I made, I just resolved that I was going to finish this in nine months. And so 268 days later, just short of nine months, I finished the 52 parks. 18 national monuments and two national preserves. It sounds so cliche to say, oh, well, if this can just help one person, it'll all be worth it. You know, we've heard that a million times, and, but you know what? It is true in this case. It, Every time that someone contacts me and says, I know now I have neck cancer, um, thank you. I didn't know that before. Um, if I can play a little tiny piece in helping someone else with their diagnosis and their treatment and help them on their journey, I will suffer any amount of pain. <laughs>